And here we are for this week's edition of the Lightning Round with Brad Butt. Brad, are you all set to go? Yo, let's roll. All right. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau has uh, finally announced his new cabinet. Any surprises there for you, Brad? Yeah, the one surprise is the new Minister of Foreign Affairs, Melanie Jolie. Um, I don't think she has a lot of international experience. So obviously the Prime Minister felt strongly about putting uh, a woman in that role. I mean, we certainly wish her the best, but that one surprised me. Uh, most of the others know. I was delighted to see our own Omar Agabra be reappointed Minister of Transport. I think he's done a good job there. So let's give this cabinet a chance and let's get Canada back. Yeah, we have one more deserving uh, member of parliament, Nick Rakalid. But of course, as you mentioned in a previous show, getting two ministers in the same uh, area of Peel, probably highly unlikely. Um, the, uh, the prime minister had talked about business support programs. He was going to continue them on. We have uh, some that, well, we had some that have already expired. We're looking for an extension. What can we expect to see? Well, yes, uh, the old programs known as the uh, Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy and Rent Subsidy programs have been transformed. They're, they're now very specifically geared to those hardest hit sectors and ones that continue to be, which really in the case of Ontario isn't the case anymore, those businesses that are in lockdown situations. So they're really trying to wean people off these programs. That's very, very clear. Uh, unfortunately, it's gonna to be too early for a lot of those businesses. On the provincial side, we have a new reopening plan which is a revamp of another reopening plan, which is a revamp of a real, we've had a lot of them, Brad, what's new about this one? Well, I guess the number one thing about this is that there are no longer capacity restrictions uh, in really any indoor settings other than what the fire code or the occupancy code would normally allow you to have. So a lot of businesses are breathing a sigh of relief that they can fully open to their patrons uh, indoors. And uh, they've set a timetable for phasing out uh, of proof of vaccination and other restrictions uh, that are still there, mask wearing and so on uh, into 2022. So good news for business uh, last week. And of course, the premier always gives us that warning. He will shut everything down in a heartbeat if we start to get COVID cases out of control. So if you haven't been vaccinated, go get vaccinated, get double vaccinated and uh, continue to take the COVID tests. Um, new labor bills are happening at Queen's Park, Brad. We've had a lot of uh, uh, chatter about what's happening on the, on the human resources front about uh, um, records of employment, people being dismissed. Uh, for uh, non-compliance with uh, vaccination regulations. What's happening at Queen Par Queen's Park on the labor front? Well, the Ontario Minister of Labor, Monty McNaughton, has been a busy guy the last week. He's introduced four different pieces of legislation in the, at, at Queen's Park to uh, amend some of the rules and employment standards issues, recognize foreign credentials. He's even going to let truck drivers use washrooms when they stop and have their truck at a location where maybe they've been barred in the past. So it's very labor-friendly stuff for, for workers. The last bill was something called Working for Workers Act. So they're doing lots. Yeah, the truck driver one's a real tough one because uh, businesses are trying to protect their uh, employees. But of course, truckers, on the other hand, need a place to, uh, to relieve themselves. So uh, on the uh, small business tax uh, subclass, um, tax, taxes on businesses uh, have been a, a hot topic. Of course, this one comes from the province. And uh, you've got some updates on this one, what's happening. So the provincial government is allowing municipalities to establish a, a small business property tax subclass rate, which would be lower than the regular commercial rate. The Region Appeal Council is dealing with a report on Thursday. Staff are actually recommending they not adopt the small business tax class rate. It is a very complicated issue. I think more to come, but unfortunately at this stage, it's being recommended that Peel not adopt the small business subclass rate. Now, of course, Brad, when a, a, if a subclass rate gets a reduction, is the province picking up the balance or are other taxpayers? No, well, that's the, the problem, right? Is you have to shift the tax to somebody else, which means large businesses would pay it to, to subsidize 
these small businesses. It's a very complicated tax process. And a thorny issue. And we'll uh, we'll get more updates in the, in the weeks to come. Uh, that's all the time we have for the lightning round. Brad, we'll uh, talk to you next week. For sure.